tell you what a comfort you've been to me, Arthur. Oh, what a friend's for, Beryl. I always had a soft spot for you, Arthur. Times like this when I can't help wondering what might have been. Yeah, well, I've lived with my disappointment as best I can. Terry. What I always say is, it's never too late. Your dignity and suffering is an example to us all, Beryl. You always were a discreet man, Arthur. I admire that. Uh, look, we, we have to go, Beryl. Um, any problems, give me a buzz, eh? Oh, I'll keep in touch, Arthur. Don't you worry about that. Come on, my son. Has Marcel been having fun with life, Terry, then? Really, Arthur? Chatting up your old mate's widow straight after the funeral. I was merely being supportive. Oh, oh. Anyway, Alfie Murdoch made a tight-fisted get rest in peace with no mate of mine. Do you know, her old man was the first scrap dealer in the East End to get a telex machine. Well, that must be why she fancies you so much. You know, a complete contrast in personalities. I'm glad you showed Mr. Daly. Who the hell are you? Uh, Kenny Hatfield. <laughs> we had a drink the other night. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. I've brought your flying pig. You what? Don't you remember? Kitty Trips. You said you was dead interested. Well, I never said anything of the sort. Now, don't say nothing. Wait till you see the flying pig. <laughs> it's a real winner. How many times have I told you, Dwayne, it's only meant to take kiddies? Well, where'd you want it, Mr. Daly? As far away from me as possible. Where's <laughs> the money? Oh, hang on, hang on. We'll have to see Mr. Daly first. Well, yeah, of course, Ken. You could have it for a month for approval. Won't cost you nothing. Now, look, Kenny, get yeah. yourself and bloody porky out of here, will you? Well, not many, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a moment, please. Allow me to handle my telephone calls in future, will you? And get that clown out of here. Yeah, come on, sunshine, it's private. Hello. Georgie Silver. As I live and breathe, how are you? If your governor doesn't want to hurt himself a few, Bob, I'll have to find a site for it myself. But I'll have to tell my boss that Mr Daly's got it. So, there's Phil. He ought to have a cut. I ought to be able to double that if the weather stays good. Hey! Have you heard of Frankie Farrow? Yeah, of course I have. You're going to be staying at his gaff for a week? Yeah, I know, yeah. The only thing is, I uh, don't think I need the work. Hey, where'd you get that? Oh. Los Angeles is on the red phone, Mr Silver. I like this, Terry. I like this very much. This is the sort of area I had in mind for you right from the start. So? Oh, the music business. Mm. Listen, you'll be nice to the geezer. Let him win a few games, you know. I mean, you could end up part of his entourage. Terry McCann, friend and confidant to the stars. <laughs> Why not? I mean, these people are very lonely. They are isolated from their loved ones. But just because he is a superstar... Now, don't get him off. Listen, Frankie Farrow went out with trams and those long hot summers you keep banging on about. All right, so he hasn't had it for a long time. No. But it's not just England, you know. He's an international star. Very big in L.A. What, Luton Airport? Oh, no, Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas. Sand dunes or something. I mean, he's up there with old brown eyes, you know. He could be too, you play your cards, right? <coughs> He'll see you now. Oh, sorry. Come 
coming. Nice oh, to gee, see you oh, after all yeah. this time, Arthur. Terry? Yeah, the wife still talks about that washing machine you came up with. Pleased to meet you, Terry. Take a few. Here, carrot juice, crammed, packed with vitamin D. <laughs> Why not? Uh, not for me, thanks, no. Now, I need a good bloke I can trust, Arthur. I get your drift, Georgie. Someone discreet who can stick close to Frankie. Close to Frankie? No, no, no. Frankie's flying over to the States tomorrow. I mean, he's only headlining in Vegas for three weeks. Oh, he's still working, then? Still working? Still working, Arthur. I've been managing Frankie for over 18 years, and I'll tell you, that boy has never had so much work in his life. He's down to his fighting weight and singing like a bird. I've got clients, kids who think they're stars, who give their right arm for the kind of work he gets. Oh, still working. Oh, no offence, Georgie. Anyway, what's happened is uh, Frankie's housekeeper and chauffeur, Mr and Mrs, uh, what's her name, gone and retired. Crying shame it is, been with him for years, just like a mum and dad to the boy. So I need someone to keep an eye on the place while I sort out replacements. A uh, sort of caretaker, you mean? Well, it's a bit special, Terry. The entire gaff is at your disposal. Well, yeah, <laughs> sounds all right, doesn't it? We'll drive out to the dream house first thing in the morning. <laughs> the dream house. I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's what the house is called, Arthur. After his big hit in 65. What a belter that was. What a great song. Who appreciates a song like that these days? Ooh, bleeding nobody. That's who. There you go. There's your money. And that's for the drink. I'll have a large brandy and have one yourself while he's counting. Cheers. God, that Kenny's a scheming little slag. No wonder he shot off like that. Shot off? You had him out on his ear. And he bunged you a ton. Well, he bunged me a ton, to be precise, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how much do you think he's going to be taking out of that thing over a month? 200, he reckons. What? You think he'd do a straight split? Never. I think it'd be twice as much as that. You think what you want, all right? But Dave, uh, do you remember old Frankie Farrer? Frankie Farrer? Yeah. Now, what was that song? Put it out, we'll have to see Mr. And a wife used to go for it in a big way. Dream house? That's right. Yeah, that's what he called his house, you know that. Sodding great thing it is, and I'm going to live there for a week. And I. Hey, want a no change from that fiver then? Not a lot. No. Bon voyage, Frankie. Don't hurry back. Very impressive. That's Georgian. Still nice, though, isn't it? Now, a bit pushed for time, so we'd better get on, find out what goes where. Ooh. Wipe your feet, Terry. All righty, the grand tour starts here. This is the hall. Dear, oh dear. Her indoors are love this little lot. Well, can she play? No, 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 no. no. She just likes polishing things. Uh, yeah, the lounge. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, look, 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 the man himself. Yeah, painted by a famous artist whose name has unaccountably slipped my mind. Don't exactly look overjoyed with life, does he? No, 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 no. That is your natural melancholia of the creative artist. Yeah, nicely put, Arthur. Shall we adjourn to the recreation room and swimming pool? Yeah, yeah. Take care, Terry. Any problems, give me a buzz, all right? Yeah, don't worry about me. Gym, sauna, snooker table, be the first holiday I've had for years. I might pop over and see you if I fancy a swim. 
I'm late, Arthur. Now, look, don't let all the technology frighten you. You know, things like light switches and running water. I'll miss you, too. Well, come on, come on. Can't park there. Cheers, Frankie. Old chap, what could I do for you? Well, the thing is, Mr. Silver, the um, the phone at Dreamhouse is on the blink, and uh, well, I can't find anything to eat. Well, multiple apologies, Terry, old chap. That was very forgetful of me. Listen, you got cash? Get whatever you want. Get the best, and I'll refund you. Yeah, all right then. Yeah, um, but what should I do about the blower? No sweat, Terry. I'll get on it right away. Just as soon as my secretary learns to read, she'll know a final demand when she sees one. All right, Terry? Bye. Pull! Hello, Kelly. Oh, Mr. Daly. Yeah, that your, uh, that your work's canteen, man. Eh? Look, Mr. Daly, I'm sorry if you thought I was taking liberties. Let's get in the car and have a chat, shall we? Drive this to work, will you, Kenny? Uh, as it happens, no. I've got the use of the van, see? Of course you have, of course you have. You tell me, do you uh, pull that stroke on your governor often? You know, pretending someone's got a kiddie trip on approval and keeping the cash. No, I mean, yeah. Well, that accounts for the flash car and the uh, Beaujolais lunches, eh? I'll bung you and have a ton. No, 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 no. Tell me, supposing I wanted to buy ten of these uh, flying what's-its, um, how does it work? Pay me cash on the now. I'll get you ten flying pigs for three grand. I sight them, service them and empty them. The governor collars 20% of the takings, which is all you lose officially. Unofficially, you lose 30 because I take out another 10 to ensure premium sites by bunging arcade managers and so on. But not to mention a drink for myself. Oh, of course, of course. Even out over the year, you should be recouping two, three hundred quid a week. Cash, of course. I'm interested, Kenny. I'm interested. Give me a day to think it over, will you?
Amen. Mr. Farrow? Speaking. I thought you'd just left for America. You must be thinking of the other one. <sighs> I'm Derek Farrow. Frankie's brother, manager, accountant, wet nurse, highly paid toady. And in all of those capacities, I demand to know what you were doing creeping around this house. Well, I'm Terry. Terry McCann. I shall contact the old Bill. No, the uh, phone's not working. Put the mockers on the phone, eh? Very clever. No, no, no. Look, look, would I be lumbering around like this if I was turning the place over, eh? Me? I'm an Oxford and Harvard business school man. I move foreign currencies around like some people move mushy peas. And if I ever find out you're giving me the runaround, sunshine, I shall come down on you like a ton of breeze blocks. Uh, George Silver's the geezer who hired me. George is silver, an errand boy, 10% parasite. How he's got a bottle of wire and fire around this house, I do not know. Nonetheless, I am prepared to accept that you are not some itinerant blagger. Ah. Oh. Well, there's something wrong here. There's something... There was another sofa in here last time I looked in this room. Yeah, well, it's on the lawn. On the lawn? Well, I fancied sleeping under the stars. Anyway, the arrangements of the furniture is none of your concern. Listen, I'm supposed to be safeguarding this little lot. Uh, well, it's, it's just a brotherly in-joke, you know. It's, uh, it won't damage, I promise. Well, hold on. <laughs> All right, who are you and what are you doing here? Look, listen, don't think those glass ashtrays you're wearing are going to stop me giving you a slap. So you better start talking. Beam me up, Scotty. OK, let's hear it. Well, let's see now. <clears throat> It must have been the summer of 76. Frankie just got divorced from his fourth. Laura, I think that was. Mind you, she was in and out so quick, you couldn't be sure. Anyway, Frankie and me, we were sitting pretty. I mean, sure, he wasn't at the top of the hip parade anymore, but he could still earn big money in the States. And I'd been investing all of his money for him for years. I mean, I'd made him a wealthy man. He didn't ever have to work again. And then one day, he went to this... Showbiz charity do. Yeah, and what happened? Sorry, I, I was just thinking, isn't it absurd that one chance meeting could ruin so many lives? You see, there was this ballerina. I must mention her name, but she's very famous. A foreigner, you know. And Frankie really fell for her. Of course, it wasn't on the cards at all, because he was too old for it. But he had delusions, the old male menopause like, you know. And he had visions of sweeping her off her feet. But you can hardly go sweeping exotic ballerinas off their feet if three grown men have been stuffing little bits of you into every duty course all afternoon, can you? He was really persistent. And eventually, she said she'd have dinner with him. But naturally, she wanted other people to be there. So I went along. And that was how it happened. Oh, what happened? Zap. It was love at first sight. But can you imagine what I felt like when I realised it was the same for her? Oh, oh it was 
madness. I mean, we couldn't keep our hands off each other. But Frankie was... Uh, his sibling rivalry went deeper than I thought. He threw me out. Left me with nothing. And since then, my life has been unbearable. I'm glad you told me that. It makes it all clear. Thank God. And now I'm going to take you straight down to Nick. You what? You heard. What do you think I am, some bleeding idiot or something? All that cobbler's about exotic ballerina. Listen, the nearest you've ever been to an exotic ballerina is watching Chelsea on a box. Look, not the old Bill, please. Ah. Oh, a bit of sensitive spot, have I? Had dealings with them before, have you? All right, all right, all right. Fair enough, I made it all up. But look, how many people do you know get arrested for lying? Lying? No. Breaking and entering, yes. Right. All right. But first, the, uh, the phone's on the blink, the alarm system's on the blink. So how do you know I ain't set it all up so that my mates don't come in here and turn it all over when we're down the neck? Because if you had, you wouldn't tell me, would you? You'd say fair cop, gov, and be as good as gold all the way. Quite right. Good point. Second. Well, come on then, second. Well, don't lose your temper. Don't get angry. Now, in all honesty and straight up, I am Frankie Farrow's brother. And I am now angry. Look, just give me a chance. I can prove it. I'll I tell you what. Look, if I can't convince you, I'll let you take me down the neck. How's that? All right. All right. But if you're messing me around, Sunshine, taking you down the neck might involve several journeys. Oi, come here. Wait, don't go in there. No, I can Listen, prove it. Just turn the light on. Here we are. It's better be good. I built up a little stock of year ago. Frankie thinks it's all income tax stuff. Well, should he care? Because he's a mean, tight, fisted little scumbag, and a fella could die of thirst in this house, that's why. Do you know what I think? What? I think you used to work for Farrow. Oh, God knows what that is. And you got caught with your fingers in the governor's cigars, didn't you? And found yourself out on your ear, yeah? So one day, you're in your local drinker, well buried, and you steam round here and start intimidating an oil painting and a sofa. What are you doing? Well, it's nice. It's got style and taste. What's occurring? Look, Frankie's cuttings. Now, there must be one of me in here somewhere. Haven't you got any little family photographs dotted around somewhere? I thought you were joking. He used to say the pictures of the family made him want to puke. No, no, no. See, he had all of this cosmetic surgery done years ago, and he hates to be reminded of what it used to look like before. Now, here. Look. It's the shadows. That, that's the Royal Command Performance, 1966, and that is me, slightly obscured by Her Majesty the Queen's right elbow. That's you? Yeah. Well, I didn't have any bins in them days because I was trying out contact lenses, see, but they used to irritate me and uh, made my eyes all swell up like no, a pair no, of sheep, no, I'm so... sorry. Look, this ain't good enough, son. At 12 o'clock, I become a raving psychopath. <laughs> Beautiful, fantastic. Now that is me, all right? Frankie Farrow goes to court. Yeah. A pop idol went to court yesterday to accompany his brother. Chart top of Frankie Farrow has seen leaving Marylebone Magistrate's court with brother Derek. Yeah. yeah. Who had just been charged with indecent exposure, assault, right, and being drunk that. and that's disorderly. Right. The offences were alleged. <laughs> Committed during Look, last house that was enough. Heartthrob Farrow's performance. Oh, God, they're a right little heckler, you, aren't you? All right, all right, Derek, I believe you. But it was him that got it in the news. It was him that said, I'll come down to court with you. He says, I'll stand up and speak on your behalf, he says. And what does he do? He fell off a of Fleet Street and got it in all the papers. Oh, no, calm down, it's just an old newspaper article. It's not that, it's him. The way that bastard always comes up smelling of roses. The way everybody falls over themselves to kiss his feet for being so nice to his so troublesome kid brother. 
going all the time. He is rubbing my face in the dirt, the hypocritical two-faced... Ah, oh, what's it worth? It's all over now. What's all over? Well, what do you think I'm doing here? Boozing it up in a borrowed penguin suit. I'm holding a wake, man. I'm carousing by the graveside. No, hold on, no. Don't, don't tell me. Let me guess. Now, this ballerina of yours, right, she can't bear to be parted from the delights of your little body, right? So, maddened by a frustrated desire, she finds young Frankie at night, suffocates him with her tutu, yeah? And then the pair of you cobble out a shallow grave in the grounds. You'll be laughing on the other side of your face in the morning. Arthur! Hello, love. <laughs> well, isn't Beryl going to get a nice kiss, then? Oh, of course. <laughs> there we are. Who's that nice young man? Nice young man? Oh, Terry. Oh, no, no, no. I left him at home today because I, I thought I'd like to have a little chat with you without being disturbed, Beryl. Oh, I see. I'd like to mention something that I've had on my mind. This gets more and more interesting, doesn't it, Marcel? Now, look, it's common knowledge, Beryl, that uh, Alf left you nice and comfortably off. I mean, everyone knows that. But that does not prevent you from wanting to make a profit on your own account, does it, Beryl? How much do you want, Arthur? Well, oh, please, Beryl. I am talking about investment. Now, How much do you want? Three grand. You can have it. Today. You won't regret it, Beryl. No building society will pay the dividends that I have in mind. There is uh, one condition, Arthur. Fire away. You let me cook you dinner tonight. I can't wait, Beryl. Then you'll just have to learn some self-control, won't you? <laughs> Shall we say 7.30 for eight? Eight what? You are a wicked man, I'll tell you. I'm very naughty to pull my leg like that. We all know what happens to naughty boys who do that, don't we, Marcel? Oh, look, thanks, just open. Could I give you a lift? You know, I always thought we'd make a good couple, Arthur. Very compatible. <laughs> compatible? Yeah, that too. Mr Daly. Well, well. How's things? Well, I, um, I wanted to discuss the purchase of some of your uh, automated pigs. Happy to talk about it any time, Mr Daly. Uh, there's just uh, one or two little details I'd like to clear up before I uh, come to a decision. Oh, no hurry, Mr Daly. <laughs> I mean, for example, I'd, uh, I'd like to have a look at one or two of the sites you have in mind and, and meet the people in charge, you know? I mean, not, nothing personal, you understand, just to uh, set my mind at rest. Uh, could you hold on a second, Mr Daly? <laughs> Certainly. How am I fixed for appointments today, Gloria? Well, perhaps I could fit Mr. Daly in after I've seen the accountant. Right, oh, sweetheart. Out to a treat. Could I meet you round about midday, Berryman Road playground? Fine, fine, Kenny. I'll see you there. Bye. This morning, Frankie Farrow is no longer a client of this agency, and the registered company of Frankie Farrow Limited is going into voluntary liquidation. The bastards flogged the rolls and flown to Spain with the drummer's wife. I want Woodard to fix it so that bastard can't lay his hands on another penny, especially the Dream House. Oh, there, there, Mr. Silver. There, there. I was locking up, didn't I? Bastard. You've been pouring that stuff down your throat all night. Well, what do you care? 
I care when you start smashing up the house. Oh, yeah, the house. It doesn't matter if I'm dead or alive, as long as the flaming house is all neat and tidy. You're as bad as my bleeding brother you are. Get that loud Derek out of the house before he does something disgusting on the X-Men stuff. I've heard it all before. Oh, he wouldn't stand for all that self-pity bullshit either, eh? I like the sound of him more and more. You bastard. Oi! Smash anything else in this house, Sunbeam. I'm gonna put you to sleep. Yeah. Oh, Bet it was your game! Death to music. No, 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 no! I'm gonna have to get advice about you. And the Lord said, let there be gloom upon the world, and there it is, lo, Totteridge. Here, guess what? What? Your brother wasn't in Las Vegas. No, no, he was in a working man's club in Oldham. Oh, yeah? Yeah, then he sold the company car and legged it, didn't he? It turns out a dream house isn't even his. Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. Here, here, did you tell Silver about me? Yeah, he said you can stay as long as I'm there, all right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I also told him about the piano in the pool. Ah. Uh. But I don't think it sunk in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they get bored with the swings. Here, sit yourself down here. Come on. Here we go. Right, what's this second? Oh, well, this is Mr. Woods. Mr. Woods, Mr. Daly. Mr. Woods, pleasure, Mr. Daly. Kenny here's been telling me about your machines. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. And I'm very interested. Just what we could do with round here, I can tell you. Oh, I'm surprised you haven't got something like that here already. Well, I could have all kinds of stuff. But it's a question of the, uh, right proposition. Hey, um, what about the council? I'm entirely responsible for this playground, Mr. Daly. And a pigeon pup. And a pigeon pup. Yes, I reckon three or four of your flying pigs would do. Right there. There's no problem with power. Right, I'll be happy to let you have three, Mr. Woods. Kenny will make the arrangements. Tom, smash it. Three big ones. Right, oh, Mr. Daly. <laughs> At my office. Tom, and you'll uh, let us know about those other sites, will you, Kenny? Oh, I'm only too pleased to have you take an interest, Mr. Daly. Oh. Good omen, my son. Yeah.
Can I help you, gents? Who are you, lad? Oh, I'm the caretaker. Who are you? We're from out of town. No. Hey, what's this piano doing in the pool? Learning to swim. Come on, state your business. I've got a hard day. Flash buggers like your Mr. Farrer shouldn't come up north and spend money they don't have, pal. Mr. Farrer's emigrated. We know. That's how we've come to have a look at fixtures and fittings. Ah. No. No, I'm sorry, gents. No, mate. No. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let me assist you to a safer place, please. Really, Terry, you shouldn't let them stand so close to the water. There could have been a terrible accident. Now, gentlemen, a couple of yards further, please. What's your game, cock? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I do apologise. It's just that I thought, you know, with the uh, dark glasses and the way you was creeping around, that you were, you know, blind. Whoa! Whoa! They bloody hit me. You bloody hit him. That's right, son, and if you don't get him out of here now, I'll bloody hit you and all. He bloody hit me, I... I no. Oh, He's hit me. Sorry. He won't forget this in here, you know. Go on, on your bike. <laughs> yeah. You all right? Now. Do you want a hand? Now. No, look, stop that, stop that. Let's go inside and wash it properly, eh? Hang on, hang on. Oh, hang my God, you don't need that. But it's mine. Look, just get your face cleaned up first, eh? There's a geezer in a tracksuit. Tasty. Come on, I'll introduce you. <laughs> We come to see Frankie Farrow, we're his most dedicated fans. We want autographs, a tour of the house and all the perks. You're joking. Well, I bought a copy of Dream House 14 years ago. Yeah, she left it in the sun and it wrinkled. Oh. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? Listen, the only thing is Frankie's gone to Spain. I'll tell you what, you could meet his brother Derek. Better than a poke in the eye of a burnt stick, eh? Yeah. Who might you be? Oh, I'm Terry. I'm Barbara, right. and this is Janet. She's heavily into blondes. That last bar. Well, hold on, I've got to let them in. They've come to cut us off. Just like bloody home. Shall not see them lit again. Thank God. Here, Terry, come and feel our biceps. <laughs> yeah, in a minute, love, in a minute. Ooh. Now, look, Arthur, for some unaccountable reason, she fancies you rotten. So she handed over the capital with the great expectations oh. of you dropping your dax. <laughs> yeah, and don't come over all shocked. I mean, you were stringing her along, weren't you? Look, if I don't keep her sweet, she's going to want four grand from me. Close your eyes and think of England, mate. Hey, you bloods, there's trouble at Disco, and there's some folks round here saying it'll be closed for good. What's all that about? His brother used to be famous. Dear, oh dear, look at the state of it. Yeah. He ought to do something about that face. Poor love. Mm. Do you be interested in a flying pig? So where'd you two spring from, then? We've run away. In search of romance. You mean sex. I remember that. Run away from what? I've run away from Neville. She's running away from Dave. Tis Dave, isn't it? I think so. I've hardly seen him since he bought that greyhound a couple of years back. Just the odd whiff of dog food as he passes me on the way out. It's funny how you suddenly notice things that have been going on for years. I suddenly noticed I've been married to a man who wears socks with his sandals. Mm. I mean, grey socks and all. <laughs> so, we've left the kids with my mum in order to enjoy our unofficial holiday to the full. Well, you might as well enjoy it to the full here, eh? I am. There we are. You'll do. Oh. Uh, you will stay at the dinner. Terence uh, went and done the shopping. Oh. Arthur! Oh, 
flowers. This is my youngest, Bernard. Oh, how do you do? Oh, thank you, Bernard. Come through, Arthur. Have a little drinky. This is my second youngest, Stanley. Stanley? Oh, oh, sorry, dear. But... Campari and soda, please, Bernard. Arthur? Oh, uh, vodka and um, tonic, please, Bernard. Th thank you. Excuse me. You all right, Arthur? Yes, yes, fine, fine. I'm a bit, uh, bit tired, you know. Not business problems, I hope? No, 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 no. No, no, no nothing like that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Don't sulk about the boys being here, Arthur. I'll get rid of them as soon as we've got everything we need. Here you go. I prefer baked beans cold myself. With brown sauce. Mm. Brown sauce, there you go. How Frankie used to uh, avoid baked beans like the play. See, he used to get so nervous when he performed live that he used to break wind uncontrollably. <laughs> and uh, the band had to play twice as loud to cover it up, so he used to sing twice as loud to cover it, you know, get Oh my god, no. No. Arthur? Arthur, I do believe you're hiding from me, you naughty boy. I'm coming to find you, Arthur. Oh! Arthur? Oh, you're going to love this house, you are. Says one thing, this house, and that's Star. No use to live in it. Frankie Farrow. Of course, he's retired now. Lives in this big castle in Spain. Hello, my little beauty. Hey! 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 Now, come on, spread it on thick. You might as well taste the stuff, eh? Can have ketchup on it and all. <laughs> <laughs> so where'd you find this? Well, I told you, in the, in the cellar. Well, I couldn't even find a cellar. Yeah, but the wine cellar's in the attic. Of course it is, Malcolm. <laughs> come on, girls. Celebration time. Oh, lovely. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So, I would like to propose a toast. Obscurity. Obscurity. Now that Frankie Farrow, better known to all of his admirers as old scumbag, has finally left the premises, his young, sensitive and talented younger brother <laughs> Derek may now rise to his full eminence without anybody else sneering or even taking the piss. What are you going to do then? Petrol pump attendant. Petrol pump attendant, wow. what ambition. Come on, girls, give him a hand. Oh, uh, he's made a splash at last. Isn't he a good swimmer? <laughs> he's on the piano.
Now, Beryl's boys, I had to do a runner last night. What did you bring him here for? Well, you're supposed to be my bloody minder, aren't you? Oh, Mum wants the word. Ah, no, 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 don't touch. Look <laughs> When you move in properly, I'll arrange a nice little photo call. Perhaps have a few drinks for the Fleet Street lads round the pool. Here we are. You're going to love this. I just know it. Here. you, fella. Oh, yeah. Hey, hope you whip me, bloody cock! Good stuff. Here, pal. Huh? Whoa! Get her on! Here, I know our way out the back. Get your coat, Terry. This day with Neville. Oh, yeah. Turn off. Turn off. Oh, look at stage on my suit. Look at you. Well, that's really green, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, go, go first? No, no, go on, go on. All right, all right. Keep going. Someone on the other side. So, see. You sir? No. Oh, oh, well done, mate. Well. Come on, come on. Straight up the ladder. Over here, we catch up. Terry! Oh, are you all right? Well, come on, Terry. No, we can't leave it. Come on, son. Yeah. Oi! 